Hi guys, it's great to see you again. This lecture is the first time in the course we really talk about Firebase. We'll learn how to install Firebase and integrate it into our app. Of course, the course can be taught using a different backend framework, but the main point of the course is how to let you learn to build iOS apps in depth and to learn to talk with backend guys. One reason of its popularity is that Firebase is hosted and run by Google, which means the servers are powerful and reliable. And Firebase provides a free plan is probably enough for us to validate the ideas. Here we already logged in with our Google account. Let's create a new Firebase project for our chat app. It might take a while depending on your current network traffic and stuff. Great. Here is the dashboard for the project we've just created. The next step is to tell Firebase that we want to use this Firebase new project to back our iOS app. We do that by input our iOS app bundle ID, which can be found in the project information. It's in fact this bundle identifier of our project. Let's copy it over. All right, the others are optional, so we don't need to worry about them now. We now need to download a plist file. Simply hit the download button. Firebase tells us to move to the project root and stuff. So let's do it. Go to the path that includes the plist file, then drag it into the, into the project. Remember to drag it to the root of the project. Also remember to check add to targets stuff as required by Firebase. Basically the plist file contains all information about the project we've created in the Firebase. Okay, to use Firebase, we need to install its library and related dependency. To do so, we use CocoaPods, as that's what Google uses. CocoaPods is a dependency manager specifically for Swift and Object C. Like if you need any Swift or Object C library, you can use it to install the library and itself needs to be installed on our machine first. Here's how to install it. All right, the first step Firebase asks us to do is to run the command pod init in the terminal. So let's open your terminal to run this command. A quick way to open terminal is holding command and hitting space, then search for terminal. We need to do this in the app directory, so use the cd command, then drag the project in the terminal. We're now in the project location. We need to jump back to the folder containing the project using the cd dot dot command. Okay, good. This is our project directory. To see where you are, you can use the open dot command. This will open the current directory. We're indeed operating in the directory of the project. All right, let's run pod init in the terminal. To see what it gives us, look at the project directory. This command creates a pod file. You can use any text editor to open this file or simply open by, by Xcode. In this file, we tell pod what we want to install, in what language, for which app. Next, Firebase tells us to add this line to the pod file. This means we want pod to know that we want to install the Firebase core library for our app. And the last step is to let pod actually install whatever we specify beforehand in the pod file. All right. After this step, an Xcode workspace file will be created for our app. This is sort of our app with all the libraries installed using pod. From now on, we need to work with this file instead of the original project file, if we want our project to be able to use those libraries. All right, having Firebase installed doesn't mean it will run automatically. We need to import Firebase and do some configuration in the app delegate class so that our app can connect to Firebase when it runs. In the app delegate, we typically do some initial setup for the app when it starts running. So it's a perfect place to let the app connect to the database when it launches. We use a fire app object to perform configuration in the application did finish launching method. That's done. We now can run the app to verify installation. All right, we can check the status in the step five. Okay. Maybe we need to uninstall and reinstall the app, then check it out. Very good. Let's go to the console. Firebase has become a unified app platform. Not only we can use it as a real-time database or for user authentication, it now can act as your analytic, messaging, and notification solutions. We can also store image, video files by using storage which is specifically designed for storing files like images and videos. In our app, we will first need to upload the media file to the Firebase storage, then retrieve the download URL of that image and save it to Firebase database for later retrieval. All right, to use those libraries, let's start with the SDK installation. 
Just like Firebase Core Library, we will use CocoaPod to install the required libraries. Firebase Authentication, Firebase Database, Firebase Storage. And run pod install in the terminal again. CocoaPod will automatically download and integrate the libraries into our Xcode project. Fantastic. All right, we'll start working with Firebase next time. See you then.